The Legend of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Part 1, Chapter 24, Nightmare. Raph put his hands to his hips and looked thoughtfully at the menacing dark outline of the warehouse imposed on the navy blue night sky. He began to have doubts about the whole idea of coming here himself and knew he would be in trouble with his sensei when he got back to the lair. But that was all the more reason to continue. He could not have his family seeing him as a failure any more. He needed to find some kind of crime or conspiracy, save the day and be seen as a hero. He was sick of being looked down upon and repeatedly being judged unfairly. That being said, what if he got himself, or worse, Michelangelo hurt badly during this whole thing? He shuddered at the thought. If he hurt himself, he would feel stupid. But if he got his little brother hurt, oh, it did not bear thinking about. In an attempt to stop himself examining his current circumstances too closely, he focused on gaining entry to the warehouse. The doors were clearly locked, but there was a slot next to them. A key card was required. Of course, the guards would need to have access and therefore must have key cards. He pickpocketed one of the guards he and his brother had knocked out of their key card and slid it into the slot on the wall. There was a beep and a flash of a green bulb above the slot before the doors slid slowly open. As the doors clunked inwards, Raphael rubbed his hands and flexed his arm muscles with anticipation, but was decidedly disappointed. It was just an empty warehouse, with a few crates here and there, plus the odd shelving unit. Nothing special. No mystery. No conspiracy. Nothing. He had been hoping for dead bodies, aliens, other mutants, or at least something distantly evil or worth looking at. However, Mikey failed to let this deter him and was immediately curious. He began to waddle over to the crates to take a closer examination. Raph shortly joined him in the hope they may find at least something vaguely interesting. After a few minutes of sifting through several boxes of paperwork, Michelangelo got suddenly very excited. His face was glowing. Physically glowing. Something inside the crate was lighting his face up in a bright orange glow. Ha, ah, dude! Check out this awesome nightlight! He giggled with glee. Raph turned to look and was immediately taken aback by what Mikey had uncovered. It was a large transparent canister, slightly bigger than Mikey's forearm, that was glowing due to the contents of a fluorescent gold-coloured and viscous fluid. It was labelled at the top with the words Element J, made in the United Kingdom, highly unstable. I am totally taking this with me. It would look awesome next to my... Mikey chirped. Raph cut him off. Just shut up a minute. One thing's for sure. This isn't the usual thing you find in places like this. I think we should get Donnie to have a look at this before we use it as any kind of decoration. Mikey haphazardly slipped the canister into his belt. A sudden stream of at least 20 ninja-like soldiers, most with a range of Japanese weapons, swarmed into the room. They were all wearing identical uniforms of black trousers and red sleeveless tops, as well as silver metal helmet masks covering their entire heads, except their eyes. They appeared to be a wide range of people, male and female, a couple as young as the turtles or even possibly younger, and also three who were potentially over 50. At the front of this band of ninjas was a tall and widely muscular figure in a polished and silver full suit of armour with hook-shaped spikes on the shoulders, knees, forearms, elbows, feet, shins and the backs of his hands. He had dark red luminous eyes, practically burning with resentment through the small gaps in his helmet. The boys felt their hearts begin to race as fast as Sonic the Hedgehog trying to outrun the Flash as they realised that the beast who had plagued all their worst nightmares since as far back as they could remember was standing before them. Michelangelo was once again vibrating with terror and all that Raph could muster was sh 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 shredder. My, my, how you've grown. Fascinating, spoke the Shredder in the darkest sounding drawl the boys had ever had the misfortune to hear. He turned to his many minions. Take them to our base across town. I want them alive and squirming with fear and hopefully. 
he turned to face the turtles as he fired his final words like bullets. Pain as well. He ended with a blood-curdling cackle of laughter. He then allowed four blades, two on each of his fists, to extend from his armoured gauntlets as he brought his arms out to his side as if beckoning his prey to attack first. Michelangelo audibly gulped and took a step back from the embodiment of Beelzebub that stood before him, but Raphael decided suddenly he was going to have none of this. Nobody was going to get anywhere near him, and especially not his brother. Oh yeah? Will you come and get us then? Bring in our bucket head! He shouted bluntly. What are you doing? Mikey worriedly queried. Come on, dude, we gotta try and take him down. Raph said, sounding either brave or stupid. Even he wasn't sure at this point. Then, with steely precision, Raphael fell into stance and unsheathed his size. Mikey decided to follow his brother by getting into stance and removing his weapons from his belt. Maybe they might stand a chance against him and the others. His brother probably knew better than him anyway. This shall be amusing, the Shredder scoffed. The fight was on. Both boys immediately darted in opposite directions and began to kick, punch, hit and stab their way into action. Mikey was able to punch one of the ninja soldiers in the face whilst tripping another over with his opposite leg. As a result, the man, who was wielding a sword, fell forward and slashed at another nearby ninja, who seemed to slump to the floor from her injuries. Raphael was meanwhile using his size to knock the various weapons the ninjas were using from their clutches. He then slid under one ninja's leg and kicked him with both legs in the butt. He fell forward and created a domino effect of toppling over nearly all the ninjas in front of him. One ninja managed to hit Michelangelo in the face and caused him a black eye. Michelangelo was taken aback but just about managed to lift his leg up and slam it foot first onto the other ninja's leg. He heard the crack of bone and knew he had landed it just right. Raphael suddenly felt himself get thrown to the floor by a ninja who had managed to curl their arm around his neck and throw him sideways into the floor. He grazed his cheek on the concrete ground but managed to stagger upwards again. 